let's see this guy is running around like he did and right click and he's properly changing pose now he's strafe walking and in air he's still aiming and his rotation name offset is being replicated welcome back and right now uh, our example looks like this and we have those two really cool uh, stages when we have the first uh, the third person example and we have this uh, aiming poses right and we're not we can actually just use one of them or the second one of them and we haven't talked about all the setup events yet so it's i think it's time to use one of them so <clears throat> a lot of functionalities in the hr ecosystem like this is just the animation system but there are more components to it uh, they all work based on uh, gameplay tags And to work with gameplay tags, first you have to first of all go into plugins and say gameplay tags. And we don't need gameplay abilities, gameplay tag editor, it's, I think it's enabled by default and this is the most important thing. And now we can just go here and say project settings and we have gameplay tags here in gameplay tag section. And we can either add gameplay tags by hand and just add new tag or we can add tags from a source, which is a file of ini. <coughs> and we can specify those tags there uh, separately. But we can also do a data table, which we're going to do right now. So let's make a new. Uh, and this will be Miss Kelly's data table. And data table row structure is gameplay tag row, not restricted, because restricted, uh, not all, not everyone has access to restricted gameplay tags. So we just want to say gameplay tax table row, okay? And let's call it dt underscore example tax. Now, gameplay tax is a, a specific structural string that allows you to specify a lot of animation in a hierarchy where a dot uh, separates one of uh, one hierarchy uh, entry from another. So let's just add a new row and let's say animation dot base dot default or let's say third person okay and now we're going to use this tag as a driver for our switching of animation poses and i will explain what i mean by that after we do another one let's just copy it uh, let's just duplicate it and the duplicate will go uh, in the same structure. So animation dot base dot, and this will be starter pack. Okay, we just save. We have those two. Let's go to project settings, and here in gameplay tags table list, we just add this table to the table list, and it's automatically checking only tables with this specific uh, structure as a type, so it will not take anything else. Okay, and now we can see that we have those two tags inside uh, our project and we can by hand add new sub tags in the structure and you can see that this is a structure that is nested in depth of it. And there's a lot of query options for gameplay tags, but right now we're going to use a very simple example. So uh, what do we have here? We have this right mouse button and on right mouse button we're uh, switching our aim offset type but we're not switching animation at all so let's change that let's take our component again and let's say uh, setup base pose and we have two poses base pose and overlay pose we'll go through overlay pose later on and implementation of it and we have another thing which is um oh there's no setup for it but we could just get uh, tags and we can get animation mod tags and we can then add to it on server but this is more advanced um, honestly to to use this modification tags directly and this should be used by for example ability system so we'll discuss it uh, a lot later so right now we're going to just change setup base pose and on right mouse button pressed we're going to animation base 
uh, starter pack and on release we're going to say that it's not starter pack but third person let's go here and once again we wanted those values that we have here to be default so we go to our default component we go into setup and we're going to um, runtime oh it's in runtime okay so our base pose will be animation base third person compile save and let's go back here and now we have those two poses that we have here but we're not really using them in any way so we're using directly this one in uh, in here right so this is the jumping uh, blend so what we want to do uh, is to pick one of those based on some value and we already have this value that we just set up in the character himself mm. so inside the character and uh, do, 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 do. okay so we need to have our mm, base pose we can get base pose and now we can do a blend no switch no, we can't do it like this. Okay, uh, we're going to have to have a state machine. So let's do a state machine. And we're going to call it base pose. Just like this. And say save. Uh, base pose. Okay. Inside base pose, we need to have an entry. And entry will be just idle. And it will be the third person idle. Nothing to it. It can be also an empty pose, but he will give us a warning if we have an empty pose anywhere. And from entry, we can go into conduit. And we just call it conduit, doesn't really matter. Can enter transition is saying base pose is just valid gameplay tag. If it is a valid gameplay tag, we are entering conduit. If it's not a valid gameplay tag, we're staying at the entry so whatever we specify here this will be the the base if we forgot to set the base balls and there's no coming back from the conduit so can enter transition is always true because it can always tra enter transition and now we're just going to have two states one will be called third person and one will be called uh, starter okay so now having this we can open new anim graph and we can copy this third person one cut it completely go back here third person paste it and connect this here and we don't need this anymore go back here go here to our starter we cut our starter we go back here paste it connect this here no comments needed everything is clear okay now here uh, base pose so if base pose is exactly this tag third person we want to enter this transition so if it's not third person you so it's not boolean we want to exit this transition and we want to immediately enter another transition because can enter transition is always true so we want to go here and say if it is equal starter pack go into this transition but if it's not starter pack then go back from this transition okay and this way we have this graph ready so now we've broken what we had before because this no longer exists this no longer exists but this exists I suppose so now we have this base pose saved and we can use base pose no uh, ba use catched pose base pose and just connect it here and this in air we can uh, change it by the way we can say that this is being blended mm. 
wait, uh, blend bone, layer blend per bone, okay, for our jumping. So our base will be this uh, third person jumping and our blend pose will be the base pose that we calculated whatever it is. And we're going to push it forward here. And the blend layer will be spine 0, 1 with blend depth of 3. And this is our zero index, so zero means spine zero one, and three means head and shoulders, basically. So it goes upward this way. Um, yeah. So we do this, and here we do this directly. So now we are using one of those two poses that we switch between, store it, and blend it all on top of inner and base pose. So how does it look like in game? Let's hit play. And now our character is looking around like he did. And he is running third person animations like we set up in the first video. With jumping. Okay, this jumping is a bit weird. I'm going to fix that in a second. Uh, okay, but if you click right mouse button, he will not only change now rotation and aim offset, but he will now also switch animations and he will do it as smooth as he possibly can and he will do all those actions at the same time so he'll change rotation he will change velocity and now when we are blending he's actually blending our jumping as well uh, we have to change one more thing layer blend per bond it must use mesh space rotation blend uh, so now our aim offset will be aiming where we were aiming when we jump but we want to in air ignore our um, ignore our velocity for the pose so inside blend poses third person here we can do blend by boolean air and this is false uh, Third person jumping loop if it's true. Point two, point two, nothing special to it. And here we're going to do the same thing. Let's just copy this node. And in starter pack, after the initialization, you know what? Before it, we're going to do this. This is false, and true is just this idle state why idle i will show you in a second because we don't want the character to shake like crazy like he's running we want to just to play idle and this should be now initialization if we have this initialization node here a compile save and now if we hit play our character runs properly like he can crouch while using this locomotion but it doesn't look good but if we are aiming he will actually crouch okay we have aim offset and when we are jumping the top body is acting like like it should And it is aiming properly like we did aiming when moving. Okay, let's test this on multiplayer. Two clients of a dedicated server play. And let's see, this guy is running around like he did. And right click and he's properly changing pose. Now he's strafe walking. And in air, he's still aiming. And his rotation and aim offset is being replicated. And everything in general works. 
So yeah, and if I let go, I'm going back to this state of not aiming. Okay, we got one more thing. We can go into our character and say that when right mouse button is pressed, slow walk is true, and when it's released, it's not true. And this way we'll have this effect where the character when aiming is actually slowing down a bit. Hit play again. And he's running, running, running. And now walking, walking, walking. Okay, thanks for listening and yeah, look forward for more tutorials on how to use this system.